Hello and welcome to Razaki 3D. On today's video, I'll be demonstrating how to export your models from SD Former to a finished model that you can actually import into another 3D modeling application on your computer. So in order to export your model, you have to go to the gallery, of course, or the model itself that you had opened. In my case, it's going to be this wedding band that I've got here. So in order to export it, I'll just go back to the gallery, I'll save it, or I'll also not save it because I have already saved an instance of this. Anyway, let's go to the gallery. So in order to export your model, you have to long press on your model, and you will see on the top section above your models, you will see a window indicating the directory where your model is going to be saved and the name of your model. So we have storage, emulated, zero subdeformer, then the name of your model, which is sdf underscore whatever name that is. And it ends with a dot sdf prefix at the end, as you can see. I'm not going to change anything there. Instead, I will just go to the upper right section of my screen where we have so many options. We have a a, duplic uh, a delete option, that's the trash can you can see on the top right corner of the screen. We have the duplicate button, we have the share button, and we have the export button. So I'm just going to click on this. And you will see we have various options. We have STL, PLY, 3DS, DAE, OBJ, and OFF. And the only one that's active right now is the STL uh, option. So I'm just going to go on and select OK. Interestingly, this software does not allow us to scroll all the way down where we have the other uh, options. So I'll just auto-rotate to portrait view. And once again, I'm just going to go through the options that we had earlier, the export button on the top of the screen. So as we had seen earlier, we have these options uh, of formats that you would want to export your model in. So I will just select export because there is nothing much here with regards to the selections that we've got I'll just click on export and bam it's done you can see the notification at the bottom of the screen right now so once you're done exporting the next thing you've got to go to is the uh, directory where you saved your model as you can see we have we have this on my on my internal storage that's uh, storage emulated zero so I'm just gonna go and exit this uh, SDF uh, application I'll just close it. I'll jump straight to my file manager and go to my phone storage. And I'll just go to all files and scroll all the way down to where there is the SDF folder. Yeah, subdiv former folder. I have four items here. Now you'll realize that we have two instances of the application that I had. I mean, two instances of the wedding band model that I had in SDF 3D. The first one is here, uh, SDF underscore 16155400724464 SDF. And we have the second one here that I have highlighted with the check mark on the left hand side. And it ends with a dot SDF dot STL. Now the difference between these two models, these two models, the difference is that the one that we have at the top, which ends with a .sdf prefix, is only uh, is only accessible using your SDF application or the subdiv former application. But the second one has only uh, has the dot S that has the .sdf .sdl prefix at the end is accessible with any three D modeling software that you have, be it Blender or three uh, D S Marks whatever software you're using as long as it can import a dot sdl a dot sdl model sorry about that so the dot sdf in this export actually does not stand as a prefix as a suffix uh, as a suffix rather it stands as just part of the name of your model now i just want to go on and demonstrate to you a few models that i have uh, imported into blender from sdf 3d and you will see the differences that we have in these exports uh, that have been imp imported into Blender. Side note, 
You can always email yourself the SDL models that you've exported from Subdeformer in order to have them on your computer and also save them on your Google Drive as a backup. So among the models that I have here imported to Blender, I will show you some of them here. I have a, a mug here, which is a coffee mug and a coaster, and you will notice that this one has been imported into Blender. Uh, so we have a few things that I want you to note, and I, I know that you've already noticed them. We have uh, all the faces that have been indicated on this. They're all triangles, although when you're modeling this object on SDF 3D, normally you'll have only uh, squares or quads, four-sided figures. One more thing is that Blender is actually going to tell you how many vertices you've got. So I've got about 1,830 vertices on this model. I only selected four of them, as you can see the section has been highlighted. And also the edges that you've got and the number of faces, the number of triangles that you have, and the rest is just uh, the name of the object that you have imported into Blender. Right here you can see at the top there. So that's it. Another one that I've got is... Uh, so I was just trying to get rid of the triangles for the sake of uh, Blender because I would like to have my my models neat instead of having triangles I'd rather have uh, four-sided figures and so you can see another one here which is the bus I modeled on Subdeformer I'll just let that load up a little bit before I try to expand it. As you can see it's a very heavy model in terms of vertices that we have all over this model some of this uh, some of the part of the object can actually not be seen clearly but that's because it has so many triangles as you can see we have 1999 we have actually 199,748 vertices and the edges are well over 500,000 and the faces are 399,000. This is uh, the difference between the models that you have on Blender and the models that you have on Subdeformer. Automatically Subdeformer uh, or SDF3D automatically gives you this option where your models are already subdivided and what you have to do is to make them harder by, by using edge loops or uh, split options rather which are similar to edge loops in blender in order to have this flat surface i had to use split, uh, the split option and as you can see that's that's the thing that happens with blender and sdf 3d so the subdivision surface modifier actually is already implemented for you on sdf 3d and i'll just mention one more thing as we go along you will notice all these sharp edges at the end, at the edge of your model, the sharp edges. Because Blender doesn't by default have the subdivision surface modifier model, uh, modifier rather, already implemented on your model. It will always just appear as flat faces that you have there. Whereas in Subdeformer, your object will already be smooth because it's been smoothed out and curved. So that's uh, how to export your model from Subdiv Former. I export it with the STL format option because the other options are currently not in this version of Subdiv Former. And so after you have exported your model, you can actually uh, import it into Blender and bam, there we have it. And I must admit that modeling some things on SDF 3D can be really hard in terms of coming up with the details, making them really crisp. But if you manage to come up with a model on Subdeforma, it's actually very easy compared to modeling some things on Blender. Uh, that's my sentiment about it. Just get to the comment section and tell me exactly what you think about that. So with no further ado, thank you very much for watching this video. Do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. We're very glad to hear from you. Until next time, thanks for watching Rosaki 3D. Adios.